preserving that sort of community-based traditional music that has been in, the, in these communities for so many years. I think that's the most special thing. What happens around here is that you end up going to festivals and especially the Mountain Dance and Folk Festival. Wherever there's traditional music, the same people tend to show up there. All the great musicians in this area. So you get to know them and they all become friends and there are different combinations of musicians that play together. Uh, that's one of the great things about this kind of music. You can get together with somebody whether they're a friend or not and if they play the old time music you can find lots of music in common to play with them. I've been doing the festival about, I guess, about 20 something years. And how many more years do you expect to be doing this, Dal? Well, just as long as I can. I don't play anything, I dance and dance and doll to the music. and push this rain aside just for a little while and then have a good evening rain tonight, just like Camelot, I think. So we want to bring up our house band. We've already got a fourth of them up here, our good friends, the Stony Creek Boys. <laughs> How many of y'all are visiting out from out of town here this evening? Raise your hand. Well, thanks. Home folks, reach over and say howdy to those folks and say thanks for coming to Asheville. Go away, honey, boys. I see your, your uniform tonight is the shindig on the green hat, isn't it? I bet you could get one of those over there under that tent if you needed one, wouldn't you? Might chill off here a little, you might need to go get you one of those. Good local people to perform, and out of town people also. And also it's an excellent thing for, for children and younger people. And it's, it's a thing that uh, a lot of people get involved, not performing on stage, but performing back under the trees and all that sort of thing. So it's actually, it means a lot as just a, a weekly get together and you see friends that you haven't seen. Maybe you don't get to see them but once a year and that's when that runs in the summertime. <laughs> back to 1950, probably 1950 professionally, WCYB in Bristol with the Saucemans, Don Reno, Red Smiley, and then from that up to 14 years with the Mark Pruitt band at uh, Bill Stanley's barbecue, barbecue and Bluegrass. And then from that I've uh, played with different groups over the years. I teach violin one day a week. I've got uh, two children, one's 11, one's 13. They won the uh, Fiddlers at the Mountain at the State Fair at the Ag Center, and they also won first in uh, 
Georgia this weekend, and they perform at the Shindig quite regularly in the summer. It's not just, you know, one band right after the other, or one ballad singer, or what have you. Uh, we've got one of the finest harmonica players that uh, you'll hope to hear. So, will you give a nice welcome to Milton Babb and Joe Wilson. Mr. Babb is alias the Kentucky Colonel. <laughs> no, I'm from Spartanburg, South Carolina. Uh, Joe Wilson going to do a compliment to me on the guitar, but first of all, I think I'll play a little bit of, uh, uh, what was it, Joe? <laughs> uh, old Roy Cuff's song, Come Back, Little Pal. Actually, you'd have to go back uh, uh, a few years and study our our community, our, you know, our geographical location, where we are here in the mountains, and uh, before World War II even, I remember when I, as a kid, we only had a few uh, two-lane highways out of these mountains. We were, we did not have a, an airport of any size here, so the only thing we had, we were kind of isolated in here, and we had people from similar backgrounds, and we enjoyed the same things, and we had to kind of make our own entertainment. So. Uh, it's been a it's been a hand-me-down thing, you know, from people coming from Ireland, Scotland, and things like that. A lot of the tunes and uh, the entertainment was kind of a, a hand-me-down from that, and so we did that, and it's 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 come right on up through the years. You know, we're still a little bit isolated here, and we still kind of hang on to traditions. It's part of our culture. Of course, we have the fiddler, who is one of the most photographed fiddlers uh, that I know. I've got a picture of him myself to prove it. This is my father, Grover Sutton, right here on the fiddle. He did a great job there, don't you?
see people like Goforth and uh, uh, Brian Arwood often. Uh, uh, they've accomplished in a few years what it takes most people a lifetime to do. Everybody say welcome to them right next to you there. Already, a little music arvel. All you have to do is just follow the caller. Do exactly what I tell you to do. Hey, 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 Uncle Bud, get that banjo cross tuned up in D chord there. You got it, Bud? <laughs> they give us about 50 or 20 minutes to play, but we ain't gonna play for the 30 of I mean, This tune here will last about 45 minutes if we wanted to. When this fool gets on this door, bro, he don't know when to quit. <laughs> nah, <laughs> now you ought to be in uptown, seen the train coming down. You can hear that whistle blow, Hundred miles, hundred miles. You can hear that whistle blow. Hundred miles. All right.
very proud of and, and proud of you folks for coming out every Saturday night I know I see a lot of faces here that I saw uh, July 4th weekend so that's good too I was born in East Virginia to North Carolina I did go to the with a fair young lady her name Lord I don't know Papa said, we could have married, and Mama said it wouldn't be, if you ever learned to love me, I was born.
bluegrass, country, um, gospel. Um, radio was our biggest um, form of entertainment, I suppose. And we would learn all the songs. We would go buy, we did get a record player, as they call it then, and we'd buy all the latest Stanley Brothers, Lester Flatt, um, all the good bluegrass and country. And we'd learn the songs without even realizing that we were learning all the different parts, which were the harmony parts. And um, on rainy days, we'd sit out on the porch and play guitar and sing all those songs. And it kept us close. Um, we had a lot of fun doing it, and it entertained us. Where we lived was way back in the mountains, and we um, lived a, a simple life, farming and gardening. and So the singing was our relief. It was our way of having a lot of fun together. Hear my cry, hear my call, hold my hand, lest I fall, take my hand. To be, to be able to sing with my sisters at the Shindig on the Green at an event that meant so much to me it was just like a total fulfillment, having my family be a part of something that, that means so much to me. I was just thrilled. It was just, it was just a feeling that's hard to explain. I just felt so full of emotion and, and joy and um, I wanted to share with them what I have come to know and enjoy here in Asheville, it's just, it's hard to explain to them because where they live, they don't, they say they don't have this type thing. And um, to have them see what is so prevalent here and is so free and is so, so enjoyable, I was, I felt very happy to be able to share that with them. <laughs> I started out uh, playing in uh, right in the community here, actually, playing for the little uh, private dances or parties they would have at the houses, you know. And I went from that to playing the local radio shows with my brother and some other local guys. And then from that, I got later on, I got into uh, gospel music. I played with some local groups here. For a while, and then I turned professional. I went on the road with the Kingsman Quartet and stayed with them for a number of years, and also the uh, Pine Ridge Boys out of, uh, well, we did our TV work out of Augusta and uh, stayed with them a year or so. And then after that, I came back, I left the Kingsman and came with the Stony Creek Boys in 1975. So uh, I've been more or less local ever since. I haven't done a lot of traveling since then, I stayed mostly in the, in the area. <laughs>
Georgia to knock down my last game. Knock down my last game. Knock down my last game. Well, the audiences at Shindig on the Green are always a very mixed audience. You have, and that's the great thing about it, is that they have not come for any one specific thing because there are many, many types of music offered at Shindig on the Green. The dancing is there. But the great thing is that it's a real family audience. You have all the way from two and three year olds to great grandparents. And everybody can have equally a good time. Um, it's so relaxed. I think that's why most people like it so much, because it's so relaxed, it's engaging, but there's nothing required of anybody, and uh, generally the weather is fantastic, and it's, it just makes for a very great evening. So I would say, you know, the audience is about as good as it gets. All you have to do is just follow the caller. Kids go into the middle and come on back. All the men go into the middle. I didn't tell you go back. All the men go back. And all the ladies circle left. All the ladies circle to the right. All the ladies go into the middle and come on back. All the men circle to the right. Circle to the right. <laughs> Just see if you listen. Circle left. Into the middle and come right back. Now, all the ladies circle left and men circle right. Say hello to your neighbor. Hey, don't kiss that lady right there like that. that oh, it's yours? Okay, that's fine. All the men circle left and ladies circle right. Don't kiss that one next to your neighbor. That's what fella said there. Everybody into the middle and come on back. Now, pat your right foot. Pat your left foot. Pat both feet up and down and away you go. Now, clap your hands.
lady down here said she had a son that lived in New York. She said his name was John Dunn. And if we happened to see her son, they tell him to call his mama. So we were riding down the street and we passed the building and said Brad and Dunn. And I went on the inside and I asked the reception if she had a John there. She sat around the hall about three doors down. <laughs> I went out and this boat was coming out. I said, are you done? He said, yeah. I said, well, call your mama. <laughs> folks like to go down there and here they are mr. Gillum uh, you're gonna get boy black to back you up here and you're gonna play a little uh, I'm gonna uh, play amazing grace amazing grace and, a little bit of home sweet home. and some home sweet home here is mr. Gillum and the musical walking stick songs they're sort of in the folk tradition at least in terms of the instrumentation but they are still original songs here's a little song that i made up for my youngest son when he got his first brand new pair after he had worn hand-me-downs for such a long time this is called new shooters <laughs> I have brothers and sisters too Our things grow fast so we all need shoes But mostly I get hand-me-downs I'm the youngest of them all Hand-me-downs 
gowns are not so bad. They're soft and comfy like old friends. But sometimes they got holes that leak. And sometimes they really stick. And I want new shoes for that new shoes. Decorate my feet and tweak me and swing them on. New shoes for that new shoes. I'm gonna have fun, gonna stick on the run. I'm gonna play my right out. New shoes. My wife um, considers me still a Yankee, even though I moved down here from Connecticut when I was six weeks old. <laughs> <laughs> I'm on the left on the mandolin, Casey McIntyre, and his younger brother, Jerry McIntyre on the bass. Dolly Parton's grandmother, Lindsay Parton, over on the banjo, and I'm this. We're Blue Harvest, and this is Little Mountain Church House. Dressed on a Sunday face with that old beauty so dope I remember our voices filled the air Mom sounded like an angel on the side spread of When the road was cold, I'll be there And looking back now that little mountain church house Has become my life for the soul It was there in that little mountain church house I first heard the words that faced my last fall. The gentleman on the guitar here does a fine job singing some lead. He's fixing to sing us one right now. He's, uh, he's picked with uh, quite a few people in bluegrass music, uh, Furman Boyce and his band, and, and uh, Carl Story and the Ramblin' Mountaineers, who was a member of them for a while. We're glad to have him picking with us. Mr. Ray Harper from Pickens, South Carolina. This is a Harley Allen song, and uh, uh, this is our arrangement of it. It's one entitled Lice Road Going Home. tonight and uh, we got one that's uh, we want to introduce to you 
Is it coming up? This is Cody McDevitt. I think it's always good to get him on stage young if you can. So you give Cody a big hand. So call down the mountain, can you dig me? Call down the mountain, can you do? Can you just call me, can you dig me? We won't be that good old man. And tell the truth, I might drink a little too. So come on down the mountain, can you take me? Come on down the mountain, can you do? Hey, just come and can you take me? We won't drink that girl down the